Johnny! It's Richard, actually. Richard Barrett. Oh, I know what you did. The question is, who are you? My superiors are very fond of names, faces, particularly faces. One scene never forgotten. And you. Richard Barrett, one of the champions of fire, and no logical way of escape for Richard Barrett. But once again, the gifts given to him by the unknown race of people from the lost city in Tibet are called on and used. Three people, Craig Sterling, Sharon McCready, and Richard Barrett, endowed with the qualities and skills of superhumans. They are gifts that are a secret to be closely guarded, but it is a secret that enables them to use their powers to their best advantage as the champions of law, order, and justice. Call it a hunch if you like, Tremaine. A guess, a wild, crazy guess, but I think I've stumbled onto something, something so big. In what connection? I'm not saying, not yet. But what on earth? You Look, mean? I said it was big, and I meant it. It's huge, immense, and quite mad. It's so mad that, well, if I'm not right, you'll want to lock me away for my own good. Yes, well, I'm inclined to do that right away. Richard? I'm sorry, there's my cue to go. I'll call you later. Barrett! Barrett! Something big, immense, something quite mad. When did you take that call, Tremaine? Uh, 11 32 last night. And since then? Not a word. What about you two? Have you heard from him? Well, come on, come on, have you? No. We haven't heard anything. Well, it doesn't matter. Richard is quite capable of looking after himself. And we've got far more important things to do. Helicopter. That's the sound I heard at the end of the telephone call. Helicopter. Yes, you're quite right, it was.
My name's Richard. Richard who? Richard who? I know. It's just a jumble of shapes and colors. Confusion. Maybe Richard's confused. We're in trouble. you and your staff could make it to me. Very glad. Well, it's imperative that we did. <laughs> Didn't want to miss the Big Bang, eh? <laughs> Naturally, the chance to see an atom bomb test has its um, academic fascination. Oh, exactly. But we are much more interested in your security arrangements, General. Yes. Yes, quite so. Well, I don't think you'll find anything wrong there. Sure not. Nevertheless, we shall be looking. That's what you look like, Richard.
So you don't know who you are, eh, huh? No idea. No idea at all. <laughs> well, I suppose you must be somebody. Everybody is somebody. No, I don't know. Had a sister of mine got hooked up to a feller who drank nothing but milk and sarsaparilla. Now, he was a real nobody. <laughs> How'd you get here? I walked. Where from? Sydney. <laughs> now, it's 1,300 miles from Sydney. I know. I read the sign out there. You see, I got a crack on the head. I, I came to out there. I've got a key ring with Richard on it and a gun. Oh, yeah. Gun. Here. It'd be a little more sociable if you put it away. I think it's important that I hold on to it. Why? I don't know why. What's your name then? Banner. Banner B. Banner. <laughs> well, I guess my mother was a little short of imagination. I tried the phone, it's working, but there's no answer. In this place, uh, it seems empty. Why? Why? Well, I'll tell you why it's empty. It's empty because there's nobody here. <laughs> where is this place? Bad Joke Springs. No, I mean, where is it? I know it's 1,300 or so miles from Sydney, but where is it? Well, ah. suppose this is a map of Australia, right? Right. About here is Sydney, right? And just about here, the outback begins. Just miles and miles of desert. Well, you trace a line through that till you come to where there's nothing. <laughs> well, right down there in the middle of all that nothingness, is us. I don't think you'll find anything important here. General, mm. could we have another rundown on the explosion area? Oh. Sure. Well, we expect total destruction as far as here, about 50 square miles. An overspill of blast as far as here, minor effects to here, total safety here, where we are. 50 square miles? And a crater more than 10 miles across. Well, that's what the boffins estimate. But don't forget, this is the first completely clean bomb. Wouldn't be allowed to test it otherwise. The effect wouldn't be more than, say, a few billion tons of high explosives. It's reassuring. There'll be no contamination, no radioactivity. We hope to move into the area within 24 hours. And just exactly where is this pretty little toy situated? At the bottom of a well. Here, in Bad Joke Springs. What is it then? It's obviously been a well. What's this? Some kind of pumping equipment? Oh, well's dry. Been dry for 60 years. Oh, bad joke springs and the well's dry? That's it. <laughs> That's the bad joke. You know, I've seen something like it somewhere before. Something just like it. I... I can't remember where. I can't remember what it is. It's new. It's... It's not been up long. No. It's not likely to be if they're going to do what the set are going to do. Who? Fellas who put it up there. Drove everybody away to that thing. Gave them two weeks to pack up and clear out. Everybody from here to... Everybody from miles around. Except me. I ain't moving. Because I know they ain't going to do it. They ain't going to go through with it. They're not going to go through with what? 
What do you mean they aren't going to go through with it? They're not going to go through with what? What? <laughs> what is this thing, Banner? <laughs> No call to go doing that. That's precious liquor. Precious liquor too scarce for you to go on. Are you all right? There was a man. He was dark and stuck here. He had a scar right here. Was with me. This other man, he. He was hurt. So there were two of you, huh? Yeah. In that case, you must still be out there somewhere. Take a look. There's nothing to see. Just desert. Blinding hot desert. Sharon. Sharon, when you were aware of Richard, what did you see? The same as you, I should imagine. Describe it. Well, it was a kind of nothing. A space and a light. Bright, blinding light. Come on, we've hardly covered a couple of miles, yeah? Yeah, no, you rush too fast, boy. Burn yourself out in no time. Now, the trick is to rest a lot. And in between rests, to walk slow. Real slow. Like a, a turtle swimming in jelly. Thick jelly. <laughs> Lemon flavored. <laughs> hey. I think we'd better go and take a look. Shot in the chest, the well, same kind of neat little gun that you're carrying. Drop it! Drop it! Hey, get over here! I can't abide neat little guns. Well, you remembered them right well, didn't you? Well, I suppose the man you killed do stick in your mind a bit. You think I killed him? You had a gun fired. He's got a hole in him that wasn't made by termites. Are you trying to tell me you didn't kill him? I don't know. Well, I do. It all figures. A fight, he gets killed, and you get a crack in the skull. Simple. Now, it's the next part that's complicated. What am I going to do with you? I mean, I don't know the ins and outs of all that happened. Maybe he didn't come for you. Maybe you had to kill him. All I got as evidence is a dead man and you. I gotta see things as they look. He looks as if he might have been a bad one. Reminds me of the feller who itched up to my sister. And on the other hand, you look a nice, ordinary kind of feller. No. Not... Not ordinary. I'm... I didn't know, boy. I didn't know. It's 
gone dark. Dark? What are you talking about? You must have been looking out with your eyes shut. I wish it wouldn't cloud over. It might be a bit cooler. Craig. I know. Well, what are we going to do? What can we do? We don't even know where to start. We have to wait until Richard contacts us. I don't think he will. I think he's dead. Everything's going off without a hitch? Yes, so far, General, so far. New nemesis, people. One would think you're the worst pessimist in the world. We are. You see, we always expect the worst. And then when it's only half as bad, we feel we can cope with it. General, <laughs> do you mind if I throw in my pessimistic two cents worth? Go ahead. The test area has been completely evacuated. More than two weeks ago. There's not a chance there's anybody sitting out there. No, no chance at all. Everyone was warned individually. There's been nobody in that area for the past two weeks. Except our own helicopter patrols. Here, boy, here. <coughs> you weren't breathing. No heartbeat. Look, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't have put you in there. Look, I wouldn't have put you in there, but there was, there was no heartbeat, nothing. You were dead, boy, dead. Let the snake got you. Both fangs right there, see? The snake got you. Now, I don't know of anybody who got a bite like that and, and stayed alive. And you didn't. You were dead. As dead as that man I've ever seen. Yeah. You are here, ain't you? I mean, you're not six foot under in this spotless man. Oh, I'm you. here, just. Yeah, and Dan, you were right. You were right when you said it. Before this happened, you said you weren't ordinary. Well, you're right. You're no ordinary man. You might just be right. Yeah, uh, dang, sure I'm right. And I think you lying there, pump full of snake juice, and me shut on the air heel on top of you, and up your pop. Oh, kill. It's unnatural. Now, where did I come from? I didn't just fall out of the sky. <coughs> well, maybe... Maybe you did just that. I was out looking for a stone, see? A big stone just for you. For me, huh? Well, I had to bury you proper, didn't I? I ain't a savage, you know. Oh, and I would have been a lovely grave when I had it finished. Well, lovely. Ah. 
Nice big headstone with a date marked on it and all. Yeah, I even composed a little poem to put on it. <laughs> oh, rest in peace, poor nameless git. You upped and died when you got bit. <laughs> nice, ain't it? Uh, it's different. Yeah, to probably ring it round with a few stones and Vanna. land at a few wild flowers. Yeah, Vanna, Vanna. Vanna. Try not to sound too disappointed. Huh? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you were going to share me something, you remember? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, just over here. Come on. pipes bust, otherwise no damage. Looks to me as if a bullet bust a pipe. Oh, yeah, there's uh, blood on the seat. Ain't nothing to you? No. Well, it seems to me that's how you got here. Can't be any other explanation. All right, all right, I'll buy that. But why? Why am I here? Well, no, that's something to do with that bomb. Bomb? What bomb? Hey, you've been looking at it. Right outside Joe's place. What, that's a bomb? Yep. One of them there atom bombs. <laughs> I don't go for them myself. Hey, ain't you coming down there to have a look? Delay the test. Don't talk nonsense. Only to give us enough time to cover the test area. Only. Have you any idea how long that would take? My good heavens, the detonation area alone covers over 50 square miles. And in any case, for what? Just because you've got some wild idea that Richard might be out there. That's right, it's a hunch. Exactly, it's a hunch. They've paid off before. Haven't they? Well, yes, I know. But I mean, there's no substance to this. Okay, I agree that we thought we heard a helicopter in the background when Richard called in. And helicopters have flown over the area. But where's the connection? Richard's last assignment. Come on, come on, Tremaine, you tell me. Well... Richard was doing a last-minute check on subversive elements who might want to sabotage the test. This test? Good heavens, it was only a routine formality. Now, come on, you tell me. Have we got one shred of evidence of any subversive elements or possible sabotage? I am only asking you for... Not, not a chance, Craig. Not a chance. Calling Major Joss. Come in, Major. Major Joss, go ahead, Razor Red. Your situation has not changed? I'm still grounded in the detonation area. Well, Major, I have to inform you of the emergency council's findings. They have decided against sending another helicopter in to pull you out. The risk would be too great. Major, did you hear me, Major? Yes, Commissar. You understand what I have just said? Yes, Commissar, I understand. You know what we are asking of you. You are asking that I die for the cause. I am a soldier, Commissar. It is a good way for a soldier to die. You will not be forgotten, Major. I promise you. I, we all, salute you. I will accomplish my assignment, Commissar. I will accomplish my assignment. When's this thing going to blow, Banner? Today? Is it today, Banner? <laughs> oh, that's a theory. Banner? What time today, Banner? When are they going to blow that thing, Banner? <laughs> Never. They think it's going to be three o'clock, but... That's the plan, yeah. That's in 35 minutes' time. What if we leave right away? Well, we might make a couple of miles. Three, maybe. Relax. Just help yourself to a drink. They'll never do it. Of course they're going to do it. <laughs> this is Australia, boy. Nobody goes around blowing great chunks out of Australia. This is a test area. They've evacuated this place for just one purpose. <laughs> that all along. 
You stupid, useless old man. We've been standing around here wasting time when we could... Ah, boy, you just listen to me. Don't call me boy. My name is Barrett. It's Richard, actually. Richard Barrett. My superiors are very fond of names and faces. Particularly faces. One scene never forgotten. And you... who you are, huh? Yes, I remember. And the dead man, I did kill him, Banner, I had to. But the other man, the other man got away. What other man? I don't get any of it. I was trailing them because of something they were planning to do. We did what we came to do. You hear that, Johnny? What were they planning to do? A robbery, maybe? <laughs> Something big, huh? Something huge. Immense. Quite mad. Somebody stole my gun. Yeah, the other man. How in tire nation did he get here? The helicopter, remember? He can cover the whole area from there. We mightn't even get a glimpse of him. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Activate. Tell me what he did. You see that box-like device up there? You mean a bit sticking out that looks as if it doesn't belong to the rest? That's right, it doesn't belong. He put it there. You see, the nuclear device in this well is clean. There's no contamination. The effect of the explosion has been carefully calculated so no one will get hurt. What does all that mean? Now, look, Banner. Imagine a fire out there in the bush. Who'd get hurt? Uh, nobody, I guess, except in a few snakes, maybe. Right, now, what if a storm fanned the flames right over here? What then? Well, uh, that'd be the end of you and me and the whole place, I guess. Right. Well, that's your storm, this is your bushfire. That's what he's done. He's put a bomb on here which goes off at the same time as the other. 
The effect will be devastating. The cloud of contamination will spread for 1,500 miles. 1,500 miles? Sydney's nearer than that. Hey, my sister and that no-good husband of hers live in Sydney. Take your jacket off. Yeah. Come on. I'm gonna try and get closer. Now, when I give the word, you throw the jacket over there, right? Right. Drinking, man. Reflexes are too fast. Hey, you out there! You hear me? This bomb goes up in 20 minutes and you're with it. Our only chance is for me to pull the fuse. And you hear me? You hear me. I will die a hero and will be honored like a hero. And nobody will ever know what happened to you. Nobody will know. Richard's out there. I know. I felt it too. Sharon, he is practically sitting on top of that bomb. We're going to have to tell Tremel. Sit down. That's no use. It's a waste of time. I tried before. They're never going to understand. We're going to have to sabotage the test. This end. Is it true what they say that just before you go, you see the whole of your life passing before your eyes, huh? Does it matter? <laughs> well, give me something to look forward to. Yeah. I've had a funny kind of a life. Well, not so much misspent as overspent. <laughs> uh, I ain't complaining, though. But you, you still have uh, had <laughs> a few years ahead of you. Now that seems a pity that you... <laughs> Come on, uh, he's not long enough to get as close as that. Second throw it. He's, he's well hid behind that billboard. He's not going to let you get close enough to see him. Maybe I don't have to see him. I'm going to edge over to the main panel. When I get there, you throw a fit, faint, do something. And then? I'm going to pull every switch and wire I can find. But they'll gun you down. Maybe.
hell, you'll never do that. Not in the vision. Nothing wrong. There are too many wires. If I touch the wrong one, we've had it anyway. I need help. Expert help. There's less than three minutes to go. It's still a chance, Sharon. It's still a chance. General Winters. Yes. Do you understand all this? <laughs> Some of it. This is the fusing device here, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Pretty complex, huh? It is. What would happen if you suddenly wanted to pull the breakers? Oh, we uh, control the fuse from here. Yeah, but uh, let's say uh, something went wrong. Supposing you wanted to stop the detonation from here? That's a purely academic question. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I know it is, but uh, just the same. Yeah, minus one minute thirty. We'll discuss it later. No, General. I'd like to discuss it now. Steady, Craig. Tremaine, I'm not just asking idle questions. I've got my reasons, General. Very, very good reasons. Okay, then, state them. Zero minus one minute fifteen. I haven't got time. Please, General, for... you must explain this layout to me. Now. Very well. trying to do now I said what are you trying to do now I said what are you trying to do the main detonation signal goes through this pulsator here but that can't be touched until the multiple circuits are disconnected which are they the first the green cable here then oh, the yellow first the green cable yes that's right the next the yellow cable that one's hard to locate yes it is it's tucked up behind the conduit box And the next. Come on, come on, Craig. This has gone far enough. Next, General. All one has to do is disconnect the pulsator. But that's tricky. It's right at the back. Eighteen, seventeen, sixteen. 
Now, Mr. Sterling, perhaps you'll explain yes, why. for that job, General. You don't know the dangers. That bomb's hanging fire, waiting to go up. I don't think it will, General. Your instructions were very concise and quite explicit. Look here, Craig. You never know. We might bump into Richard on the way. 